vacation, a new year, a new mystery to solve. Oh no, we're not doing that. I thought this was a review of Max Payne. It is. Doesn't Max Payne have a voiceover narration? <laughs> That's only for the silly game. This is the movie. We need to be a lot more serious. Oh my god, that dark, creepy angel that I've been hallucinating! Wait, what? It must be related to that drug that makes people super powerful. So, how's the narration too silly again? Enough with the joke's voice! We have absolutely no sense of humor in this at all! Really? Because this already looks totally ridiculous. It can't be! Because it's dark, and gray, and frowns, and gray, and dark coats, and gray! In fact, it's so gray, even the walls are gray! Uh, you think that's such a good idea? People weirdly take their wall colors very seriously. Exactly! Everything must be taken seriously! And now I must move on to the incredible mystery of what happened to Malcolm. Why? What did happen to Malcolm? He got lost because our studio's too big. Bet you're gonna kick a lot of ass and take a lot of names. Yes! If you mean sitting around and doing a lot of talking. I did not. How did you confuse the two? I'm sorry, voice, but this is how Max Payne is done now. <laughs> Would you think it'd be a lot of one-liner shooting and bullet time? Exactly that, yes. <laughs> no, but we do have a PG-13 rating. My head has a landline? Based on the third-person shooter from 2001 about a detective getting revenge for his murdered family, Max Payne tries to capture the graphic novel style and story that made this one of the most kick-ass games when it came out. It had film noir dialogue, comic book artwork, a great sense of humor, and even bullet time when you could slow down the action whenever you wanted. Nowadays that doesn't sound like much, but back then it was a pretty big deal. A mere seven years too late, the film adaptation was released, and from the trailers it looked like it was right on track. It looked over the top, dark, kinda goofy, but all badass. Is that what we actually got in this movie? Well, let's get this meme out of the way. What? No! Let's see how Max Payne went to Max Payne. It's funnier if you see that spelled out. Ha ha! Let's take a look at Max Payne. Oh, sorry, I gotta wait for a second. There we go, Payne. I don't believe in heaven. I believe in pain. Ooh, someone saw Welcome to Marwin. To the movie's credit, it starts out pretty solid, with a voiceover narration, beautifully cliched dialogue, and a setup so overly dramatic even Sunset Boulevard will be telling him to buy a puppy. I could feel the dead down there, just below my feet. You'll find it's a slow burn to assness though, as we cut to the one week earlier building. I never get my packages on time there. This is the cold case office. Thanks, movie. The sign didn't tip me off. You can give me more hints if you want. That's a pen. That's a debt, Max Payne. That's a file holder. That's a what duck! Is that That's a duck, man! So what's the story? His wife and kid were murdered. They never found the guy. Wow! That was so much more powerful than showing it to us in the intro of the game. I got chills when he said that. In fact, if only the game could go back and incorporate that style into that big reveal. No, 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 God, no, please, Michelle. No! He said, no, it was sad. You want a coffee? We're out. Remember when you were a kid and you'd hold your breath when you run past the gravy hunt? I think only you did that. Just uh, leave that man alone. Hey, it's what the game designers said when they read the script. Meanwhile, in the Max tricks, we see Payne is trying to get mugged so he can get some answers on a lead. Yo, homie, that's a really nice watch. Kind of reminds me of one I lost. Pawned it up on 128 a few hours ago. Did you a cop or something? Most thieves just rob people, but I find these guys give interesting and pleasant conversation. Though they do take a long amount of time to actually commit the robbery, increasing the chances of getting caught and or distracted so your personality-less protagonist can kick your ass, I'd still give four stars on Uber Thugs. What you Open your eyes. You ever seen this woman? Your wings are cool, Mac. By the way, I loved you in Party Monster. Seriously underrated. One of the thugs tries to run as we see we're just beginning this terrifying journey into the world of probate, beneficiaries, and goblins. Mr. Wells. Fine, fine, no goblins. These monsters are hallucinations in his head as well as a good distraction from the train. As Max drops by the sleaze ball from every movie you've ever seen in your life. Just call him Leisure Suit Lazy. A little offended I didn't get my invitation. Well, I didn't send out an invitation. Look, I told you. 
Go find Bill's partner. Gotta love those parties where people kinda dance and kinda talk. So it's a nice beat, right? Not full on dancing, but just kinda moving my shoulders music. God, I need a boyfriend. Listen, if you don't give me a new name, I'm gonna start frisking every one of your friends. You notice, by the way, Mark Wahlberg is operating at half Wahlberg? He's not disinterested, but he's not really all that into it either. He's still out there somewhere. What do you mean, no? What happened to her then? It means that with your follow through and unsolved murders, I don't have much hope for that girl in the alley. He's somewhere in between Planet of the Apes and an AT&T ad. My partner was killed too. We're both looking for the same person. Our shows and movies, we want them when we want them. So they should go with us. Anywhere? You got that right, kid show thing. If I'm more interested in him talking to Gumball about cable service, we have a problem. I got any all of Trevor's friends. Max, Natasha, Natasha, Max. She's... sprushing. But they're interrupted by her sister, played by badass Mila Kunis. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say that without the giggles. Don't act like you can! Don't get me wrong, Mila Kunis can be a very good actress. Even a great one. But like any performer, she needs to be cast in the right role. <laughs> what the fuck?! And trying to be an intimidating weapons expert at three foot nothing looking like Audrey Plaza voicing Grumpy Cat sounding like Meg Griffin isn't gonna cringe any spines. Kneel down. Kneel the fuck down! You need to talk about my sister. Though I'm not gonna lie, she does look pretty cool next to a Jim Beam barrel. For a true Kentucky straight bourbon. Christ, why is that hot? Kunis sees he's a cop and backs off as he continues to search the Riddler's party and finds some people taking, ooh, raspberry slow-mo. He comes across this guy, though. <music> Waiting for him to kiss first? Do something! Did you see my butt? She saves him from Fernando's advances, but she feels something is up on her way back home. Owen, it's Natasha. For God's sake, spring pants, Frank Miller's snow is surprisingly freezing. No, I won't be an eye Frankenstein. We then cut to a shot of Max Payne putting on his coat. Thank God for that shot of Max Payne putting on his coat. What the fuck was that? So he's called over by another cop named Alex. I need you to look at something. That's my siren. Ain't it neat? Okay, get out. What happened to the her? Just one. It looks like Natasha's found in pieces, but because this is PG-13, all we see is the arm of Laura Palmer. As you probably noticed by now, there's no longer any narration, absolutely no humor. Honestly, there's not even any personality. It's just Max going from scene to scene performing run-of-the-mill cliché after run-of-the-mill cliché. Now, don't get me wrong, the game was cliché after cliché too, but it was over the top and it tried to really push as many of them in there as possible. That was part of the fun, it was go big or go home. Well, Maybe not home, but... You should hear all the questions I get about my old partner. Well, good thing you got my back then, huh? I did everything! Everything! I did Grounded for Life, man! Those are some rough reviews I read! I'll give Kunis credit that her best acting is when she's not talking and she's shooting her death glare. I'm sorry. I didn't do anything. How'd she do that? Dude, wasn't it just raining? Like, that very same day? This movie's like a game of sim weather. Is that a thing? Oh, never mind. It will be. Alex? He walks into Alex's place, find he's been murdered, and someone else is trying to kill him. Still dead. He wakes up in the hospital next to wizard and sidekicks phenomenon, Bo Bridges. They're so honored he's on set, they don't even have him in focus. Dispatch couldn't raise him. They found out from Krista where he'd gone. I do hate it when a movie forgets to put glasses on. There you go. The whole force has you pegged as the prime suspect. Now you tell them where to find me. We dissolve from bored and angry Wahlberg to bored and confused Wahlberg as he attends the funeral of Alex and gives his condolences to his wife. <sighs> Damn! That slap sounded like Indiana Jones punching a Nazi! What have you done, Max? What has Max Payne done? I don't know. This movie's so boring, it's hard to follow. So everyone thinks Max killed Alex and Natasha. That's why an entire building of cops stand up, yet none of them actually stop him from going into Alex's office. Back up, back up. But we stood up. We stood up. Could we have done more than stood up? Even if we could, I still would have stood up. Uh, 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 
Ah, I understand your editing there. It's symbolic that they both like kicking. Son of a bitch! How much Hallmark movie snow can the city get? So wait, it's snowing yet it's hot enough to melt the snow into falling water? Does Storm get drunk and decide to anal fist Mother Nature? Drop it, shithead. That's Max, shithead. You need to talk about my sister. Always probably the last person who saw her alive. Except for the guy that left his wallet laying by her body. My mommy says this is my angry voice and I'm not afraid to use it. Look, Natasha, call me. Don't say her name. You know, for two relatively cool actors, that was some dorky staging. He stops her club just to pull her gun closer to him. Like he's thinking, ha ha, oh yeah. You know what I do for a living? You try anything and I'll kill you. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought that was a line read for the spy who dumped me. Uh, yeah, that was really intimidating. Mm. Okay, she's got the glare, we established that! They go inside to find a lead to Natasha's killer. Ah! Owen? Ah! Ah! Just relax. It looks like you're acting with passion. None of that here! Owen? Oh yeah, go silent. We need it for this incredibly dramatic moment of guy we've known for 70 seconds dying. Or maybe it was just done to show off this effect, which, looking back, kind of looks like a 90s anti-drug commercial. So your friends say marijuana's gonna take you places? They're pulling you back. performance just looking down at shit. Is it because when you get down to eye level, he's like, Duh, what me do know? Who trained you, one of the Mario ghosts? I wanted to get this tattoo. What's it mean? That's a Norse Valkyrie. Valkyries fly over the battlefield, picking out the righteous dead. A soldier's angel. You know, if you were to tell me the most interesting guy in a Max Payne movie would be the tattoo artist, I'd ask if someone from Miami Ink Ghost wrote this. The only way you get to go to heaven is to die in violence. Which, by the way, 40 minutes and we've had none of! There's a short fight and a guy who jumps off. That's it. We never see anything else. It's all off screen. You know, it's called bullet time because actual bullets are seen. I guess it'd make more sense if you were like, Hey! He missed. It was sad. You want a bagel wow out of those two? <gasps> Christ, even when he's interrogating a guy, he's still looking down on him. His chiropractor says he's gonna get Batman Begins poster syndrome. <laughs> no one has ever had a squishy meat entirely of syrup. <laughs> if you survive, please come again. Kunis visits a guy she thinks she can get some answers from, but how can you trust a person who can't even apply his own scar makeup convincingly? See if they know anything about a detective, Max Payne. <laughs> Max Payne, he is looking for something that God wants to stay hidden. And that's what makes him even more dangerous. Indeed, a cop looking for something is very rare. It's like a construction worker next to a highway construction site. We always hear about it, but we never see it. They tuck her up in their wings. Feathers only look black. A soldier's angel. I call the big one Biden. Oh, files! Things are really heating up! Ah, he notices the wings. Also that Aesir is a Nordic word, but he's a detective. He can't figure that out. We finally get to see what happened to Max's family, but again, seeing how they already mentioned it without showing it like in the game, there's nothing really shocking about it. I dare even say, it's kind of pointless to show now. The most shocking thing is Max's gosh darn happiest cop in the world demeanor. Coming home underpaid and overworked to a crying baby who's driving his wife insane. Let's be honest, if there was inner monologue in the rest of this movie, it'd be like, I came home drunk as hell. Jack Daniels is my Ovaltine. And what's this horse shit, I thought. And they smile like that while I was elbow deep in his shit and he pissed in my mouth in my goddamn mouth. And whatever, just keep smiling. You know you're dead inside. What I wouldn't give to have my old life back. Ooh, am I making lemonade out of these lemons? Aw, ah! oh, he named his baby Baby. It's like those dog owners that have the word dog randomly hanging up. It so establishes their identity. He was maybe 10 minutes too late. Well, halfway through the movie, they're finally focusing on what motivates the main character. I guess we can start too. I hear you're looking for Malcolm. I am. 
Well, let's get going then. Wait, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it right. It's snowing in here. Yes. I choose to have a little reaction to that. You'll fit in fine. I couldn't believe it. How could Malcolm have gotten this lost? I didn't know how- Oh, hey, 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 no inner monologue. But you had some in the beginning. Yeah, so did the movie, and then they stopped, so we're stopping. It's not very consistent. I was just thinking the same thing. Thank you. All right, everybody shut up! Or shut in, whatever inner voices do. Devil boner, we should have known you were behind this. I'm sorry, I can't have just one! No, Malcolm, you dumbass. Oh, I know where he is. Yeah? Where is he? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Yes. We would. Well then, let's find out together. There. You've got guns, we've got guns. There's only one way to settle this. Yeah. And we both know what it is. So I told him, the bathroom isn't down that way, you have to make a left. And he didn't believe me, and so he made a right. I ask you, do I look so untrustworthy? No, not at all. You know, I'm so glad we sat down and talked about this. Can you imagine we just came in guns a-blazing, shooting at each other in a thrilling action sequence? That's all I ever think about, actually. Well, Critic, you continue the review, and I'll continue being this side character that's completely useless. Max Payne would be proud of you. Only you could do the Mila Kunis death stare. Oh, you mean like this? Not bad. Not bad. So after slowly morphing into John Cena, we cut to... In one week, it went from snow to rain four times! Climate change my ass? This is goddamn climate roulette! What is it, Jason? I just thought you should be aware. Wait, is that Chris O'Donnell? No. No, I... What a random appearance. He does so little in this role, so I'm not entirely sure why he's here. It's so out of nowhere and makes so little sense, I half expect the dialogue to be It's Batman and Robin, not Robin and Batman. <laughs> it's like seeing someone as random as Ludacris pop up. What the fuck? You should hear the kind of things Max is saying. None of it makes any sense. He's gotten in his head that someone here at the company is responsible. It's like cutting from one close-up of you to an almost identical close-up of you. It's just madness. Or should I say, ludicrous? Finish that, I kill you. Okay. To his credit, he has a slightly larger role than O'Donnell as another detective trying to find Payne, thinking he's gone AWOL. But much like Payne, he's a friggin' dumbass when it comes to identifying the obvious bad guy. I'm worried he's gonna get into another situation before I can convince him to come in. So you really think he's gonna- I think you need to find him. Find him with bullets. Lots of bullets in the areas that keep him alive. Max thinks he can get some answers from O'Donnell's character, proving even his interrogations are on permanent. Eh. Jackie. Hi. Uh, Detective. I know it's a nitpick, but even the way he threw that phone was kind of lame. Grr, I guess. I love you in The Bachelor. Uh, Mr. Colvin! Mr. Colvin, are you okay? Jackie! Mr. Colvin, it's Jackie! I can hear you! Are you alright? I can knock more. Should I knock more? I'm gonna knock more. I need cops to continue knocking! O'Donnell explains that the drug being developed makes people super powerful, but also forces them to have hallucinations. The exact same hallucinations, coincidentally. The rest suffered horrible hallucinations. Devils, demons. You know, it's that one chemical weird gargoyle shit oxide. Everybody always sees the same thing after taking that. They send in the SWAT team, because a guy who barely shot a gun in this movie is a major threat. But they kill O'Donnell, proving that they're in on the scheme. Thank God they can't hit much else. Oh, hold on, hold on. How many of you guys have your guns set to hit behind him? I do. I do. Is that why I keep hitting behind him? Are they speaking Tasmanian Devil? He gets away and, ooh, Mila Kunis has a gun. Guess she's finally gonna be in on the action and then, ha ha, more talking. Introducing Valkyr, 
The strength of freedom. That's what this is about? A drug? Well, yeah. A lot of crime-related things involve drugs. It's like saying, that's what this affair was about? Sex? So he goes to a secret hideout called Ragnarok, brilliantly disguised, as you can see, as he's discovered by some guards. You know, I've never craved a naming your gun dialogue as much as I have now. Hey, you ever name your gun? Sure do. What do you call it? Do Nothing funny in this movie! Ha! The slow-mo doesn't have to be that slow! The idea is the slower it goes, the cooler the stunt should look. Falling backwards, weirdly enough, isn't that cool a stunt! You know what? Let's have a race. Who'll win first? Mark Wahlberg falling backwards? Or the sloth from Zootopia getting a laugh out? Ah, sloth wins. How is it possible to miss that much? You have a freaking sight on your gun. Use it because you're mistaking a Kool-Aid stand for your main target! That chair looks reclined, but it's not like Wahlberg. It's just falling super slowly. Again, they just don't know the interesting things to slow down. <laughs> He's confronted by Baldy Von No Sweat, and after all the buildup, we better get a damn good fight with this guy. <laughs> You know, he's just thinking to himself, I could have gotten a Transformers paycheck instead of this. Who am I kidding? They're both thinking that. Maybe? He's saved by Bridges, but what a twist! He was the bad guy. I had to talk to her. Show her my side before she took it to someone else. Once that happened, though, once I realized I could use the strength of my hands to keep one thing from being taken away from me. His acting is turning to Alec Baldwin from SNL when he's not playing Trump. Michelle was the first problem in my life small enough to reach out and start. Lord, I need to talk to you. You can't let Tina go out there Alex. with that woman. So they uncuff him. You heard right. Uncuff him so they can tie him to an anchor. I'm going to place him in an easily escaped... Yeah, that. Situation. As he, of course, escapes, but jumps into the freezing water, bringing us back to where we started. And you know, having seen the story that led up to this moment, I think I can safely say I actually know less about him than when I started off. Seriously, before I at least knew the game character who was a cool, poetic, one-liner spewing badass, and this guy was none of those things and replaced it with Absolute Squat. So we're actually in the red when it comes to what we know about him. Maybe that's where the phrase negative personality comes from, because it takes away more than it gives. He's the anti-matter of character studies! But he refuses death by drowning to get revenge because the spirit is a great source to rip off, as he takes the drug to turn into one of those superhumans which always sees all those crazy-ass visions. That was adorable. That scream was so silly, I kinda wanna put other cartoony yells in there. So he goes on a killing spree. In Max Payne? That seems weird. And he tries to get his revenge on Bridges. The drug also has a selfie stick, apparently. Thanks for C4. Are you nuts? Well, I was in Free Willy Escape to Pirate's Cove. Max Payne, everybody! Is it everything you thought it'd be? Or even more. Fired a gun, did you see? I'm badass now! I I'm sure we can work something out. And in case you're wondering, no, that wasn't slow-mo. He was actually dumb enough to reach for his gun that slowly. Hairs challenge people like you to a race. On top of the Avengers building, Bridges searches for a way to get out, but gets cornered. It's Mark Wahlberg versus the lesser Lebowski. It's the showdown we've all been waiting for. The SWAT team circles around him, and... That's it! So much was gained, like an appreciation to spend your money better. At this point, I'd much rather watch this pain over that pain any day!
Actually, that one's not too bad. Everyone's like, oh, it's Dana Wayne, it's got to be bad. But it was actually pretty good. You know, it's, it's in living color days. You know, that's why he was still pretty funny and everything. I just give this shot. Go in with an open mind. Better than that! Max Payne doesn't give what fans are looking for. It's not unique enough to give moviegoers what they're looking for. And the majority of it is boring as sin. Had this movie been allowed to really go over the top crazy? I mean, not Legion over the top crazy, but awesome action film noir over the top crazy, this could have been a very enjoyable, stylish flick. As is, it's just a dull exercise in snow porn, with an occasional good shot here and there. But what does that matter when there's absolutely no substance and no fun to back it up? The mystery still remains, though. Where is Malcolm? Um, I think this might explain things a bit. Hey guys, it's Malcolm. I'm just giving a heads up, I'm not back from my vacation yet. I had a few things get in the way, so it's going to delay me getting back to film the next episode. I'll do my oh, best to Good to know we're worrying about nothing. It's not so inconvenient. I've actually been kidnapped. Well, the question still remains. Toes. Are you gonna to change that wall color? They cut off a couple of my toes and sent it to those I loved most. I think I'll leave it how it is. So I figured you guys wouldn't be in the mix. Don't you think the viewers might get upset? They say if they don't get twenty thousand dollars, they're gonna cut off my testicles with toothpicks. I know some people guys, might get uneasy by it, but you know a lot of people have to realize that change is a normal part of life. I think there was even talk about surgically giving me a third testicle just so they can take away another one. You know when they find living with a new wall color isn't the end of the world? Right now they're gambling for who gets to chop off my butt cheeks. They'll learn to live with a lot of other things. I know one of them really wants to wear them as a helmet. Perhaps discover a new level of patience, empathy, love, a new way of looking at everything. He's so cute. He's gonna be adorable when he grows up. You know, the more I think about it, it's not just my duty to keep that wall the same color. I do miss my nostrils. It's my pleasure. But the more I think about it, I wasn't using them much anyway. And that, dear Tamara, is the essence of all life. God damn, I was gonna change the world with that wall! I don't even have fingers to hold the phone. <laughs> One of the kidnappers is doing it for me. It's not too shaky, is it? Oh, you're fine, you're fine.